Okay, now let's move on to the threshing system. A couple things again to try to understand how the, thre the threshing system actually operates. First of all, there's a couple of different versions of threshing mechanism that we use inside here. So on all axle flow combines, you can get a small tube rotor and a standard tube rotor. So what we refer by a standard tube rotor is the tube itself is bigger. It's 30 inch in diameter from here to the opposing RAS bar down below on the standard rotor. On a small tube rotor, it is 30 inches from the top of the RAS bar to the opposing RAS bar. But the trick is, is the tube is smaller. How much smaller? Here's an indication. Okay, so this is the RAS bars off a standard rotor. That's the same ones as what you're seeing right there. Here's the RAS bar off a small tube rotor. You can see the difference between the two of them. Okay, they still on, on, they bolt onto the rotor tube, and you can see the difference in height between the two of them. So the tube is smaller by that much, but you still end up with a 30 inch rotor. Small tube rotor is, most of the time, standard rotor is the one that's being used in the combine. The small tube rotor was designed for the areas that are harder, heavier crops, harder to thrash. For example, rice is one of them. Or the northern part of Alberta, northern part of Saskatchewan, Manitoba, those places where they have heavy crops, doesn't dry up very much. The small tube rotors will actually increase your capacity by approximately 20% more versus a standard rotor. Now, 20% sounds great, but there's a price to pay, okay? So and I want to make it clear to everyone so that you understand that if I elect to go to a small tube rotor, I'm going to have to be prepared to put up with a little bit more rotor loss, and I got to be prepared to do a little bit more fine tuning. So those are usually the questions that I ask. If you don't mind fine tuning your machine, I'm okay with selling you a small tube rotor. If you're okay with a little bit more loss behind the combine, I'm okay selling you a small tube rotor. If you don't answer yes to both those questions, you're going with a standard tube rotor, okay? So it is a little bit finicky to, to adjust. Rotor RPM usually got to run about 100 RPM faster than a standard rotor, but it will give you that extra capacity so you get your money's worth, all right? So that's the only two things that you got to watch for. Next thing that I want to talk about is the modules. If you look on the bottom over here, you're going to see I have a small, small wire modules, I have a large wire modules, I have a round bar, I have a slotted one. And the large wire one, if I want to make it a large skip wires, I simply just pull the wires out. Now I'm missing a couple over here because I also got a cover, which is totally flat. Looks just like this, except it's a smooth plate. Those are the ones that would you'd use if you went into sunflower seed, for example. Okay, so we call them modules because when I was talking prior, the first two modules is the threshing area. The last two modules is the separating area. Okay, so if I expect that concave over there to do a proper job in wheat, for example, I'm going to put a small wire in position one, small wire in position two, large wire in number three, and large wire in number four. So these, the reason we call them modules is because if I call these concaves and I took the concave from here and I moved it to back here, what do I call it now? Because this separating area, most combines we call it grates. So that's why in the flagship combine, there's no concaves. They are modules, and you can interchange between the front one to the rear one, take the rear one, move it to the front. So on a mid-range combine, I have three concaves on the front, and I have three grates in the back. They're not interchangeable from the front to the back, so that's why they're called concaves and grates. Flagships, 
modules all the way through. I can interchange. I cannot go left and right. They don't fit because the right ones are half an inch, small, uh, half an inch shorter than the left hand side or vice versa. I can't remember which one it is. One is about half an inch longer. So it gives you the ability by having modules to be able to go and tweak your combine a little bit better once you identify where the grain needs to come out, where I need to be more aggressive with thrashing. So it's a little bit more flexible than a standard concave great, com uh, great combine. All right, now let's talk a little bit about what these bars on here can do or what they're there for. And this is, since this is kind of a live thing, reality sets in. So you're gonna look at my modules, you're gonna say, whoa, Louis, couldn't you find a better one than this? Okay, you can see where it's all bent, okay? That's done by design, okay? So obviously this guy that had this module in, he had some non-compressible objects in the field. So he put them in and he bent his bars. And he also knocked the wires completely out of his module. This is reality. That's what happens in the field. When you're inspecting your combine, this is what you're looking for, okay? So if you see any damage in here, if it gets to the point to where it's bent too much, you're going to have to replace them and put new ones in. Now, what's the concept behind these things? If I turn around and I'm inside the combine looking at this, just try to imagine yourself as being crop coming through here. These bars that are in here, we always ask the question, what are they there for? And a lot of people will answer, oh, they're there for thrashing. Well, in reality, they're not there for thrashing. Okay, they are interrupters is what they do. Now, the bars on the, the rasp bars, the rasp you have on here, again, I always ask the question, what is this for? And people says, well, thrashing. So if these are worn out, uh, then I get less thrashing. Not necessarily. We do sell some in parts that are smooth, just like this, on the top. Okay, those are the ones they use for popcorn. So, what do these things do and what do these things do inside the combine? Okay, I mentioned interruption. The crop as it's coming in, it gets interrupted. These bars are on here to keep the crop moving through the combine. Now the flow of crop through the combine is at a angle like this. If I looked at conventional combines when we first started, the concave inside the combine was in this direction and the cylinder was in this direction. You had a one pass and then the reason why most companies went away from conventional combines to rotaries is because the kernels were at the straw and kernels are coming this way and they were hitting each bar bang on. In rotary combines we took the cylinder we put it lengthways, lengthways in the combine and we change the position of these modules or concave in the mid-range. So now the crop is actually flowing at this angle as the rotor is turning. It comes across, the kernels are hitting over here and they're bouncing back inside. It's not a direct hit onto the bar. And that's what makes thrashing a lot more gentler. So that's why the industry is kind of changing over to rotary combines to try to get a better sample in the grain tank because cracked grain does not bring you money. You gotta get the kernel in the grain tank as plump as you can. That's what you get paid on. Okay, so that's a little bit of an explanation on why we do things sometimes. It helps to understand, uh, because I always get the question, why, why did engineering do, do it this way? Why this and why that? That explains a little bit of what's happening inside there. Okay, small wires basically is used for small grains, grass seed, wheat, barley. If you get a kernel that is too big that don't fit between the wires, then I gotta go to the bigger module. This one over here, large wires. So I got more spacing, so kernels can fall through there a lot easier. Sometimes peas, corn, soybeans, you name it, right there. Next one is the round bar. Round bar is for gentle thrashing crops. If I don't want any cracks, for example, I'm, I'm harvesting peas. I don't want any cracks. So the round bars will still thrash because it's an easy thrashing crop. It just pops open and 
the kernels can come out of there. Soybeans, high moisture corn, okay, that type of material. Round bars work excellent in there. Slotted, you know, if you get into edible beans, then you want, might want to go to slotted because there's none of these bars in there that's actually hurting the kernels. It's just a flat piece of metal with holes punched in it. So a lot more gentle on the seeds. Okay, now moving on a little further back. Now we discussed those. There's also another one that I don't have here which is called the hard thrash module. The hard thrash module has small wires just like this one, but the bars are a little tighter together. So I get more interruption out of it. And then the wire spacing is a little tighter. So then that way it holds the white caps inside here a little bit better so you get a second chance at grabbing them and thrashing them out. Also with the hard thrash kit comes these cover plates. There's two of them. Okay, this one over here, the solid one, will fit not in the first section, it'll fit in the second section in the rotor cage. Okay, not on the bottom of the modules, on the rotor cage itself. So when these tabs are here, you can bolt them in place. That's, this is the one that fits on the right hand side. This is the one that's going to fit on the left hand side, on the opposite side. The slots that you have over here are used so that once I install the plate and I want to move the veins, I don't have to take the plate off. The bolts of the veins will fit through here. Now this works fine on 240 series combines and prior, right down to the 8010s. And for the Western Canadian guys, I strongly recommend that you don't fight yourself, just get them, put them on. Once you put them on, they stay there forever. Okay, now, on the 250 series with the adjustable veins, the uh, ones with the turnbuckle and also the automation ones that are electric, this plate no longer fits on the left hand side because the linkage is interfering with the plate. But in all the demonstration we've done and fields that we've gone into during harvest, the linkage that's over top of the rotor cage is actually plug in a whole bunch of the holes already. So not necessarily needed on a 250 series combine. If you get into real extreme conditions to where you cannot thrash it out, then you can still use the right hand side one. It'll still bolt on there, okay? Because it's open on that side. But what we found with automation uh, on the 250 series combines is with the veins moving to the very slow position, slow position, medium, and fast, there's enough vein movement on there that we found that it does a way better job of thrashing when you get into hard thrash wheat. Okay, so you can really clean up the sample really nice. That's usually the comments we get is, man, I've never seen a sample like this in wheat. So that's what the veins moving can do. Now, we mentioned prior in that the vein position is what you use for speeding up or slowing the crop flow through the combine. But the 250 series, there's more movement to the veins, so you get a better thrashing out of it. So, Okay, that pretty much, oh, one more thing, I almost forgot. These bars, okay, they're bolted on here. Any place on the rotor that you see two RAS bar that are in line, okay, so like these two right here, these are two in line here, so that bolts right on there. I can't bolt it here. There's no place it doesn't fit because there's no other bars that are actually lined up. So the thing is, is these are bars that you install to slow the crop down inside the combine. Okay? Corn, for example, is a good one because the kernels like to hide in the leaves and the husk, and then they won't get out. So you'll stick these in there to put them in there. However, if I order my combines and I get the combine coming in and the bars are already installed, like this one, and I'm out doing wheat, canola, peas, lentils, those bars are not needed in there. Okay, so 
They do take a little bit more horsepower, so if they're in there, you can remove the bar and install brass bars with a spike, just like this guy right here. My regular brass bar that I had on here does not have this spike located right here. So this is what we call a spike bar. Okay, so you would take and install spike bars where that bar came off. Another bar is this guy right here. It's called a kicker bar. These fit at the back end of the rotor, right here. Okay, so if you end up, I'm going to use, for example, if I go into hemp. Hemp is a crop that it's like a rope. Once you put it in there, it likes to rope and it will keep tightening up just like a rope does and you have a hard time getting it out of the rotor. That's where these guys come in to move the material through the combine a lot quicker. Okay. Now, if you get into serious conditions where you end up with excessive rotor loss that is uncontrollable, I wouldn't be bashful about bolting some of these in there. Okay, I've done it in the past. See where the straight bar is? The straight bar's not there. This bar will go take the first hole and it'll take the bar that's right above it. And then you can put them into, not necessarily at the back end of the rotor, but in the number three position. Make sure you put them 180 degrees apart from the one that's at the back. And that will help to reduce the amount of rotor loss that's happening. Again, if you look in the operator's manual, there's places where they show you how, where to put these bars. So it kind of helps you to understand a little bit more. So, all right, so that's basically it on the thrashing portion of the uh, 240 series, all the flagship combines. Okay, thank you. <laughs>